So hello and welcome back. My name is Glenn and today I have a rock which I did pick up when I first uh, started making this channel and I had uh, trouble identifying it. Actually I didn't really take much notice when I identified it. I thought it might have been anthracite but the geological information of the place was not really... Oh, I couldn't find much information on it. So, I just had to put it aside. And, yeah, I think this is an andesite. There's large uh, feldspar crystals. And it does have, oh, there you go, hornblende. So, large hornblende crystals. So, these crystals would have formed after, uh, actually before, the rock came out of the ground as a lava so this was a partially crystallized lava which andesite is well known for so the only ever andesite rock i've got is a finer grain crystalline rock and as you can see the uh, feldspars are like are quite smaller and there's not as much hornblende in the actual uh, crystallization stage so that is uh, definitely a different mineralization that we see in the rock as you can see the hornblende you can see the feldspars uh, the quartz would not have crystallized in uh, this form because the lava was probably higher than 870 degrees which quartz needs a temperature lower than that to form crystals so most of the finer matrix as you can see is uh, probably crystalline glass or even very small crystals of quartz as well as uh, ever combined so it does also make up some horn blend as well now the Olivine would have crystallized first, but it would have broken down, uh, not broken down, it would have reacted with the silica to form pyroxene. Then that would have uh, uh, formed into amphibole and then biotite sometimes. But I don't see any biotite in this one. Maybe that could be. Yeah. It's too small to know. Now nah, it looks like hornblende. And do you see any quartz? Ah, that that might be a mica there. You see the extinction? Yeah. It looks like a mic uh, like a, a platy type of uh, mineral in that one. But there's not that much hornblende in this rock. I mean not hornblende, biotite mica or muscovite mica in this rock formed so far. So that seems to be the only crystal. It looks like muscovite. And so that is uh, the andesite. You can see the large uh, crystals in this rock. So we've got orphoclase, feldspar. Uh, looks like that might be quartz. Not too sure. Okay, let's have a look at the other rock. Is that quartz there? Oh yeah, it looks like a large quartz crystal. So obviously this rock is quite cool for a long period of time for these larger crystals uh, to form. Although still in the molten stage, looks like at least a third of it was crystalline. And... Just looking at that part there. Looks like a large shit of a uh, mica. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, and here we have an eroded surface. So you can see that looks like 
be hard to tell when it's eroded. Uh, so anyway, this is most likely an andesite. So andesite's known for being a quite a cool magna, and it's in between uh, rhyolite. So this is rhyolite. This is a very fine looks like chalk actually, but it is a rhyolite and basalt. So the composition is in between these two. All right, so now we have the extrusive andesite and the intrusive diorite. So these are equivalent in their minerals makeup, uh, but different localities will have slightly different um, makeup of minerals. So there is a variation in the percentage of uh, each minerals. And as you can see, this one is all just crystalline material. So we have uh, quartz, feldspar, hornblende, and this should be a mica. Uh, you, you can see the biotite is actually quite smaller than any of the other crystals. So the extinction, because uh, mica is a, a platy material, uh, they look like a plate. And if we put it next to this rock, you can see it is not really an equivalent mineral structure so this is 100% minerals uh, large minerals should I say this one has large minerals in a finer matrix and it does look like an andesite to me and there's another piece of evidence that we have so here I am on the app rocked it's a very good app and it has different uh, rock sequences that occur in a locality a lot of these smaller rocks uh formations are, are not in this app which uh, is a, a little bit of a pity but here we have tulangi and if we go over here where i got the specimen from you can turn off the bedrock and you can just bring up the map so where I've got the specimen from is this peak here. So this is uh, a tower. So you can, it's one of the major towers in the area because it's a high peak. And you get to it via uh, this road here. So that goes down there. And uh, you drive up. And it's quite a nice place. And if we put on the actual bedrock, uh, we can see that there are one, two, three different types of formations. So this one at the top is a okay, porphyries, unnamed intrusions, so not really... Uh, well known. So you got feldspar, feldspar porphyry, so that means our large crystals of feldspar. Uh, ring dikes, so it's all igneous activity. And that's 419, 400, 358 million years in the Devonian. If we go to this rock unit, that is a siltstone, which is 427, 407, so similar age to the dike, so they were deposited at the same time. And how about this formation? Uh, Black Ranger's Granodiorite. So this is the intrusive rock, uh, formed after the actual siltstone. And porphyritic, so it has large grains. If we turn to this one, Marysville Igneous Complex. So that's what this rock is. Uh, Subaerial Caldera Volcanics. So that should be basalts or whatever. Okay, Rhyolitic to Dacite Igneous Bright. So it's the extrusive minor andesite lavas. So that's why I think it's an andesite. Uh, this 
might be ignimbrite. Uh, Dacitic ignimbrite, that's what it also could be. Fluvial conglomerate, no, it's not a conglomerate. So here's an ignimbrite, and as you can see, it's a fine matrix with large quartz crystals. So this is one from Nigretta Falls, quite a long way from the Marysville Igneous Complex. And it could be a rhyolitic to dacitic ignimbrite or andesite lava. I'm going to go with an andesite lava still. Uh, it just It's not a rhyolitic ignimbrite, it'd be more dacitic. So just remember, dacite. Insight. So, could be that. No, I don't think it is a. Oh, it's a little bit hard to tell. I'm just going to go with an andesite because of the large crystals of hornblende and quartz, as well as most of it is feldspar. So anyway, if anyone can make a conclusive analysis of if this is a dacitic ignimbrite or an andesite, please let me know. I'm going with andesite myself. And thank you very much for watching my video and have an awesome time just doing geology. Why not? Thank you and goodbye.